This is Channel 4 News, covering significant topics across the globe. Coming up, a discussion about one of the most controversial and revolutionary documentaries about the lives of dolphins to date, The Cove. This documentary was intense and passionate, while affecting the audience in a way that made them want change. Looking at all of the graphic images and seeing how disrespectful the Japanese workers treated these activists was unbelievable. This documentary is truly something that is necessary for the entire world to see. Here with us are dolphin professionals, Alyssa Yaritu and Sofia Soto, to expand more on why this documentary was worth watching. Thank you, Andrea. As she said, I'm Alyssa Yaritu and I used to be a dolphin trainer at SeaWorld. So watching this documentary really got me thinking a lot about how the whole industry got started. Um, the beginning of the documentary where Rick O'Berry was talking about his involvement with the industry really touched me. When I got involved with the industry, I felt the same way he did. I just had a fascination for these animals and I developed such deep care for them the more that I worked with them. And like O'Berry, I could tell that these animals were more intelligent than we gave them credit for. I had always heard about the atrocities that occurred in Taiji, but watching this documentary gave me more details about what actually happened. And I just personally can't believe that any society would be willing to turn their back on morality just to make money. So initially I was extremely shocked to see this. I'm a marine biologist and for me to be able to research this and to be made aware of this was extremely painful for me because I feel very close tie with these animals and I thought it was extremely interesting to see how the team and organization were able to do such amazing things such as hide cameras in the rocks and to expose the dangers that um, were occurring in this Japanese city and it's just really horrible to see and it really hurt me and I feel ashamed that we didn't know about this before but this is really hidden from the media and I think it is a big problem. In 2019, dolphin hunting season in the small village of Taiji, Japan is still occurring with a quota to kill more than 1,400 dolphins and 300 whales. This annual hunting is still carried out by 26 fishermen who have permits to kill these majestic creatures, but today the practice is reported to be less dramatic and more humane. The sharp metal spike goes just between the dolphin's blowholes, which severs the spinal cord and results in an instant death. Concerning the blood, fishermen insert wooden corks in the wounds to prevent their blood from spilling everywhere. In 2018, Japan notified the U.S. of their withdrawal from the International Whaling Commission in order to pursue commercial whaling. Although many people are outraged, Japan's reasoning is that they need dolphins for meat and the Dolphin Project, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the welfare and protection of animals, says that the dolphins eat too much fish. So from a fisherman's perspective, they need to eradicate their competition. Thinking about what other issues stemmed off of the issues presented in The Cove, I was doing more research about um, reactions to this documentary and I found another documentary actually called A Whale of a Tale. And it was um, created by Megumi Sasaki and he's a New York based Japanese filmmaker who created this documentary um, kind of from his perspective of the same issues that The Cove was talking about. So. This is um, the way that he felt about it. He thought that the cove um, was essentially just outsiders coming in to destroy um, their the Japanese culture. Um, and this is actually a quote from an interview that he gave saying, consumption of whale and dolphin meat has been steadily declining in Japan to the point where many young people in Tokyo have never eaten it. So he feels like right-wing activists, right-wing Japanese activists Groups have tried to make it a part of the Japanese character um, when as time progresses, uh, less and less um, people are eating dolphin and whale meat. He also said that as long as we have pressure from outside the country, the more determined Japanese people are to continue it. So he thinks that um, the cove is just, the production of the cove is only um, fueling these right-wing Japanese activist groups to continue trying to perpetuate the stereotype of Japanese as eating, or Japanese people as eating a lot of um, dolphin and whale meat in their culture, when from his perspective, that's not really how it is. And um, this documentary is really interesting to find to see that there are actually people out there 
who um, went through the whole production process of creating a documentary to oppose what Rick O'Berry was saying in um, The Cove. Done. You can cut that last part out, Andrea. Thank you. So right now, what I really want to talk about is the detrimental effects that this has in the long run. And so obviously we see that there's gonna be a mass decrease in the number of dolphins due to the large abundance that are slaughtered and captured in the cove. So the conservation of both dolphins and whales has been severely affected and the risk of extinction remains a possibility. And it is predicted that many species are never gonna to return to sustainable lovers ever again because the problem with this is these hunters, they're not really paying attention to what species they get. And there's many different types of species of whales and dolphins, and these are just getting killed and killed and killed. So we don't really know the exact numbers, but we know that many are close to extinction. And so even with that said, dolphin meat itself, it's not very popular in large amounts. And a lot of the meat gets brought into the market by these hunters, despite the high levels of mercury found in this meat. And this poses a very heavy risk for human beings, and it's very toxic for us. And so dolphins are heavily contaminated by mercury because of the fact that they are at the top of our food chain. And so the concentra concentration of pollutants in their meat is very high. And so eating this meat can really give humans a range of diseases. And this goes from hearing and speech difficulties to loss of vision and memory, seizures and Minamata disease, which is very common in Asian culture. So another point to talk about is what happens if there's some sort of chem contamination in the water? What does that mean for us? And what does that mean for the dolphin meat that is put in the market? Well, this is something to talk about that goes hand in hand with the coronavirus, which we are experiencing now. And so let's just say hypothetically that there was some sort of contamination in the meat. That would be very bad for consumers who do purchase this meat and who do eat it. And so this could maybe cause a spread or an endemic, even a pandemic. And so this is, is where, this is why it is very important to really monitor the food we're eating as well as in other countries because nobody knew about this slaughter and it's very important to educate ourselves because it really is a health risk. Thank you for tuning in. To keep up with more of our news reports, you can also download our app for new episodes and other exclusive content.